check clearing. Check clearing, or check clearing in American English, or bank clearance is the process of moving cash, or its equivalent, from the bank on which a check is drawn to the bank in which it was deposited, usually accompanied by the movement of the check to the paying bank, either in the traditional physical paper form or digitally under a check truncation system. This process is called the clearing cycle and normally results in a credit to the account at the bank of deposit, and an equivalent debit to the account at the bank on which it was drawn, with a corresponding adjustment of accounts of the banks themselves. If there are not enough funds in the account when the check arrived at the issuing bank, the check would be returned as a dishonored check marked as non-sufficient funds. History England Checks came into use in England in the 1600s. The person to whom the check was drawn, the payee, could go to the drawer's bank, the issuing bank, and present the check and receive payment. Dot before payment, the drawer's bank would check that the check was in order, for example, that the signature was that of the drawer, that the date was valid, that the check was properly set out, etc. Alternatively, the payee could deposit the check with their own bank who would arrange for it to be presented to the issuing bank for payment. Until around 1770 an informal exchange of checks took place between London banks. Clerks of each bank visited all of the other banks to exchange checks, whilst keeping a tally of balances between them until they settled with each other. Daily check clearings began around 1770 when the bank clerks met at the Six Bells, a tavern in Dove Court off Lombard Street in the City of London, to exchange all their checks in one place and settle the balances in cash. The first organization for clearing checks was the Bankers Clearing House, established in London in the early 19th century. It was founded by Lubbock's Bank on Lombard Street in a single room where clerks for London banks met each day to exchange checks and settle accounts. In 1832 Charles Babbage, who was a friend of a founder of the Clearing House, published a book on mass production, The Economy of Machinery and Manufactures, in which Babbage described how the Clearing House operated. Beginning at 5 p.m. A clerk for each debtor bank was called to go to a rostrum to pay in cash to the inspector of the clearing house the amount their bank owed to other banks on that day. After all of the debtor clerks had paid the inspector, each clerk for the banks that were owed money went to the rostrum to collect the money owed to their bank. The total cash paid by the debtor banks equaled the total cash collected by the creditor banks. On the rare occasions when the total paid did not equal the total collected, other clerks working for the inspector would examine the paper trail of documents so that the numerical errors could be found and corrected. Jumping forward several centuries, the Check and Credit Clearing Company is the United Kingdom's clearing house. United States The Suffolk Bank opened the first clearing house in 1818 in Boston, and one was incorporated in New York in 1850. A clearing house for bankers was opened in Philadelphia in 1858. The Americans improved on the British check clearing system and opened a banker's clearing house, the Clearing House Association, in the Bank of New York on Wall Street, New York in 1853. Instead of the slow London procedure in which each bank clerk, one at a time, stepped up to an inspector's rostrum, in the New York procedure two bank clerks from each bank hall worked simultaneously. One clerk from each bank sat inside a 70-foot-long oval table, while the second clerk from each bank stood outside the table facing the other clerk from the same bank. Each of the outside clerks carried a file box. When the manager signaled, all of the outside clerks stepped one position to the left, to face the next seated clerks. If a seated clerk represented a bank to which money was owed or from which money was receivable, the net amount of cash would change hands, along with checks and paper documents. Thus several such transactions could be conducted simultaneously, across the oval table. When the manager signaled again, this procedure was repeated, so that after about six minutes, the clerks had completed all their assigned transactions and were back to their starting locations, and holding exactly the amount of cash their papers said they should be holding. Clerks were fined if they made errors and the amount of the fine increased rapidly as time passed. The Federal Reserve System Check Clearing System was established in the United States in 1913 to act as a central, well-capitalized clearing house. The objective was to prevent the occasional panics, where banks would refuse to accept checks drawn on banks whose solvency was uncertain. The Federal Reserve can physically accept and transport checks. Operation When a bank customer deposits a check, which may be drawn on any bank, the bank would credit the depositor's account with the amount of the check. However, the amount so credited is not available to the depositor until the check has been cleared by the paying bank. For checks drawn on a customer of the same bank, the bank would, usually on the next business day, ensure that the check is in order and debit the account of the drawer, and the check would be taken to have been cleared. A check is not in order if, for example, the date is invalid, the drawer's signature is not like the one held by the bank, 
the wrong number of signatories have signed the check, etc. There must also be sufficient cleared funds in the account before the drawer's account is debited. Checks drawn on another bank, termed the issuing bank or paying bank, need to be presented to the other bank before the deposit bank receives payment to cover the amount credited to the depositor's account. In the absence of the paying bank notifying the deposit bank of the special clearance of the check, for example, following a request from the deposit bank, the funds become available after the passing of an agreed clearance period, commonly three business days, when the depositor's account is described as comprising cleared funds. If the check is not in order, or if there are not enough cleared funds in the account when the check arrived at the issuing bank, the check would be returned as a dishonored check marked appropriately, such as non-sufficient funds or present again. All banks might have clerks to take checks drawn on other banks to those banks, and wait for payment. Clearing houses were set up to streamline the process by collected all checks drawn on other banks, and collecting payment from those banks for the total to be cleared. Automation Check Processing As volume grew, more efficient sorting methods were developed. Approaching the 1940s, two popular methods were Sortomatic and Top Tab Key. Sortomatic involved a set of metal or leather dividers numbered 00 through 99, operated to implement a form of radix sort. Checks would be sorted by hand according to the first two digits. The checks would be removed, and each stack sorted into the same dividers by the third and fourth digits. The process was iterated until the checks were completely sorted. Top Tab Key used a physical mechanism, holes were punched in the top of each check representing the values of various digits, and metal keys used to physically move them until sorted. Magnetic Ink Character Recognition MICR, was developed and commercialized in the 1950s, and enabled computers to reliably read routing and account numbers and automated the sorting of paper checks. Electronic Clearance Check truncation was introduced in various countries, starting in the 1990s, to allow electronic images to be made of physical checks, for electronic clearance. The legalization of remote deposit made it possible for businesses and bank customers to deposit checks without delivering them to their own banks. In the process, a depositor would make an image of the physical check with a smartphone or other device, and attach the image to a deposit. The deposit bank would use the check image in the normal electronic clearance process, though in this case maker data would not be available. Electronic payments As the automation of check processing improved, fully electronic payment systems obviated the need for paper. Two methods were developed, the automated clearing house, ACH, for smaller payments which complete in two business days, and clearing house interbank payments system, CHIPS, for larger value same day payments. CHIPS is the largest private sector US dollar funds transfer system in the world, clearing and settling an average of $1.5 trillion in cross-border and domestic payments daily. It combines best of two types of payments systems the liquidity efficiency of a netting system and the intraday finality of RTGS. Organized in 1970 by eight New York banks who were members of the Federal Reserve System, CHIPS competes with the Federal Reserve for high-value payments. Until 2001, CHIPS settled at the end of the day, but now provides intraday payment finality through a real-time system.